Good afternoon, everybody. Uneducated economist here. Thought I'd talk a little bit about these Russian bonds and the credit default swaps. This article is pretty good. I'll leave a link down in the description for you guys. It's titled something like um, a quirk in the Russian bond could hamper credit default swap payout, something of that nature. Anyway, what's what it basically is coming down to is that the foreign holders of Russian debt are not getting paid the coupon. Now, if if you're not familiar with bonds, pretty much when an investor buys a bond, the coupon is the interest rate that the bond holder will get paid. So if you can imagine back in the day when you had paper bonds, there was literally little coupons that you could tear off on the bottom of the bond that you could go and cash in. That was the coupon that you could, you know, you got paid from. Now everything's done electronically, so it's all done like putting money into your account. I'm sure there is still some bonds out there that have coupons that you might be able to tear off, but almost everything that I've heard of is now electronically done. And ultimately what the Russians have done is they said, hey, you're not getting, like if you're a foreign holder of our bonds, we are not sending you your coupon. That's, that's all there is to it, which would typically be considered a default swap, right? Or I mean a, a default, which would kick in the credit default swap, which is the insurance policy that makes the investor whole again if they if the investment that they had purchased the credit default swap for was to fail. So this is one of the things that had really kicked in back in like the great financial crisis is when all the mortgage backed securities began to began to fail. There was a huge amount of credit default swaps issued out there and that's what caused like AIG to begin to fail and you know all these other problems throughout the financial industry. But ultimately, like these credit default swaps, they're just an insurance policy. Now, what I found interesting about these credit default swaps is not just like the issue that's taken place here in Russia, because basically what they are saying is that because Russia has frozen the transactions, that it is now out of the scope. Let me see. I, how did, I wrote some of it down here. Out of the scope of obligations and deliverable obligations. So these credit default swaps are basically saying now because they froze those out, like it's not really technically a default because they're forcing it to happen. They could pay it if they really wanted to, but they're freezing the, the transactions. And somehow because that's obligations and deliverable obligations, that it's out of that scope of, of requiring these credit default swaps to pay out. So I always find it interesting how these credit default swaps end up working because like situations like this, like, you know, you're a holder of, you know, of a particular investment, you're buying a credit default swap, which is basically a premium. So you're paying like monthly to have this insurance policy that says if this thing fails, you're going to get made, be made whole again, but then it goes and doesn't pay you. And the credit default swap issuers like, yeah, but that's not really technically like, you know, our problem right because that's out of our scope of obligations and deliverable obligations so now nah, you're gonna have to you know just eat it on this one right your insurance policy is no good I just I, I mean I always find this very comical when things like this happen because some of the other things that I have found in the past is that you can find a credit default swap on a business that is about ready to fail buy up a bunch of those credit default swaps, right? That says that you are going to be made whole when this company fails or the, you know, they just failed to make their, their payments and then go to that company and say, Hey, how much to go ahead and default? Like I'll pay you like you're failing anyway. How about to go ahead and pay you to fail early so that these credit default swaps kick in and I can get paid higher off the insurance policy. This stuff kind of happens. And then on the flip side of that, there's credit default swap issuers out there who are about ready to pay out on a company that fails and they go to that company that's about ready to fail and say, how much is it going to take to carry you along a little bit farther until these credit default swaps expire and we don't have to pay out? This type of thing happens all the time. So anytime I ever find an article where it's talking about credit default swaps, I like diving into that to see exactly what's happening. This is part of the shadow banking system. I mean, this these type of things can cause a domino effect throughout the economy. This is really where people should be like focusing in on our is is issues like this that are taking place. Now, granted, I don't think that this is going to cause like a domino effect. I mean, it could coming out of like the Russian debt holders, uh, you know, but I, I really don't see that kind of like thing happening. 
more what I would see like a domino effect would be from like places like Evergrande when they begin to fail and then they start dragging down the other property developers with it and then all the credit default swaps from all the debt that these guys have when those things start kicking in and then people really don't know how much credit default swap issuance is taking place out there since most of it's done in the shadow banking system very much like what happened back in the great financial crisis is that there was a lot of these credit default swaps and insurance basically these insurance policies that were created and sold to people who never even owned the investment they were just buying the credit default swap anticipating that the particular thing that they were buying the insurance policy on was going to fail and this is where like the idea like the movie the the, the big short this is this is very much what happened there is that these guys like realized that the housing market was going to fail and so they just started diving into the credit default swaps the insurance policies that were basically saying that if the mortgage backed securities began to fail that these things would kick in and they were buying up tons of these things anticipating it and unfortunately like if you watch the movie the credit rating agencies were really screwing with these guys and pretty much saying that we have to give these things a higher credit rating because if we don't, they'll just go down the street to the other credit credit rating agencies and they'll get what the credit rating they are going to pay for to get. So ultimately, these guys who had purchased the insurance policies, those credit default swaps, went to the credit rating agencies and saying, what the hell are you doing? You're putting a grade A credit rating on these mortgage-backed securities, which are about ready to fail. We know it because we bought a bunch of insurance policies on it. You're preventing us from getting rich. And they said, yeah, we know. Pretty funny, isn't it? This is the type of stuff that happens out there. That's why, like, to me, it's all manipulation. It's all games every bit of it I mean right down to you know these guys and how credit default swaps may or may not pay out on the insurance policies that you figured that you were gonna get this is how they how they do it I mean it's it's hilarious and especially that that way with like paying a company to default early so you can get your credit default swap so you can get your insurance off of it the insurance policy or the opposite way of paying a company to continue to operate even though they are a failing company they're going to fail no matter what and the only reason why they're getting able to continue to op have operations is because the issuer of those credit default swaps doesn't want to pay out so they will carry that company along for a little bit longer it's just amazing some of the stuff that happens out there anyway what else do I had to add there was something else I wanted to talk about on that I don't know. I guess that was it. Uneducated economist, you guys let me know.